In today's video, I'm going to explain how the parts of an emergency brake or parking brake system work. Uh, the terms emergency brake and parking brake are used interchangeably. I've tried to do a video before on how to actually replace all the parts and it did not come out successfully because there's very small areas to work in here and there's a lot of springs involved. So this is going to be more of, I'm going to show you the parts, I'm uh, going to give you a couple of tips and tricks. Um, if you haven't worked around emergency brakes before, there's a couple of things I'm going to mention beforehand. Firstly, emergency brakes are always on the rear of, the, rear of a vehicle. Um, there's two types of generally used rear braking systems. One of them has a disc like this and a caliper which I have removed. You have to remove the caliper to get at your emergency brakes. If you take off your rear wheels and you don't see a disc like this then your vehicle has what's called drum brakes and they have what's referred to as shoes instead of a caliper. Now this braking system, the main braking system, has a caliper but the emergency brake system has shoes on the inside of this. I'll show you this in a moment. Um, if you have a drum brake system, so in other words it would look like this minus this disc outside donut part. It would kind of look like that, like a drum. If you, uh, if you have rear brakes that use a drum and a shoe system, those shoes that are used for your emergency brake are also used in your regular braking system. On this car, because it has disc brakes and a caliper, the emergency brake is only used to, uh, you, you pull it up or push the pedal in, depending on how the system is designed in your car, when you are uh, either need to literally or in an emergency and your normal braking system has failed and you engage the emergency brake or if you're parking on a hill and you want to make sure the vehicle doesn't roll then you engage the emergency brake. To get access to the brake shoes associated with your emergency brake system you're going to obviously first take off the disc. Now this is also called a rotor. It's great if it comes off just the way I just removed this. Slip it out like that. That's most likely not going to happen. You're going to have to fight with it a bit. Now the way that you, if, the, if you're pulling on that rotor, this thing's just not coming off. You see where my finger is there. There's going to be a hole either behind the rotor, as in this case, or sometimes, if you're really lucky, on the front of it, there's going to be a hole here. That hole is going to be covered by a rubber grommet like this. And you're going to pop that out with a flathead screwdriver, something like this. This is where it was. I popped it out from the back. You can see if I see if I put my screwdriver through there. And what happens here is that there's an adjuster right here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit there. And this adjuster puts pressure on the brake shoes. It makes those shoes come out and hit the inside of the rotor. Now, as these shoes wear, listen, these will pop out and they can wear in they can wear a groove inside your well we'll say the brake drum here because if you had either way either way whether you have rotors or brake drums those pads will wear themselves in here and they'll actually be st stuck inside here if your brake shoes have worn to that point these are the brake shoes by the way I'll zoom out a little bit here. Those are that's the top shoe. 
that's the bottom shoe that's what stops the vehicle or keeps it in place as i say when these when you apply the emergency brake or the brake if it's just a drum brake system and these come out and hit side, the inside but just to go back to how you would release these you put your screwdriver through here like this and this is a real hateful part of this job you can turn see that i'm hoping this comes through see this as i turn that with my screwdriver and this is a real crappy job because even here when i have easy access you see it's kind of hard to turn but as i turn that it will either make this the adjuster expand or contract obviously you want it to you want it to contract you want it to get smaller and that will take the pressure off of these pads now what i had to do because the old guy I bought this car from had left his emergency brake on one time and those pads wore right into it. I really couldn't get it off. And that, as you can see, is a real miserable place to be working back here. So I took the bar and I just came on all this. I didn't care because I knew, due to the fact that he had left the emergency brake on, that all of these parts were going to be all worn out anyway, which they were. So I didn't care. I just used the, and that is an option. That is an option to take a bar like this. Ideally, you're going to be able to release your adjuster by turning it the way I just showed there. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna turn this so it'll show up. Now see, you see if I turn this a lot and looking at it from the top, like if you're looking at it from this direction, you can see that that is getting shorter and shorter and if this was stuck, moving that wheel counterclockwise is going to let the, let the brake shoes come in and release it. This is our hub and bearing assembly. A lot of times, part of the procedure, if you're looking this up on how to do this, will we'll say, recommend taking this out. Uh, I get lots of videos on bearings and such, and I have never, I've done a lot of emergency brake jobs replacing the shoes and such, and I have never taken a wheel bearing off to do it. I will go through all sorts of very tedious uh, work because, as you can see, there are small parts in here, and it is tough, and you got to be patient. And sometimes you might want to go get away from it if you're doing it but you can do this in this particular vehicle and others I've done but it's up to yourself I just want to mention before I forget it is an option if you just can't get all these pieces fit together and you know you're trying to put your whole down clip on and they're popping out of place you can remove your hub and bearing assembly and then you'll have more work I personally have always managed to do it otherwise it's just I don't really want to get into that for something like changing uh, emergency brake shoes uh, one thing I want to tell you before I forget this is called an actuator there's going to be something like this that is going to hook onto a cable back here see this cable and when this when you either push your emergency brake pedal down or if your vehicle has a uh, handle and you pull it up this cable is going to pull on this actuator here's our new actuator I ordered extras uh, as I say because of the fact that it slowed down my job so now what happens here is you're gonna have something similar to this and what happens with this one Here's the one that's in place, and you can see, I'm hoping, that in this groove and on that groove, the brake shoe, oh, move my camera down there, where my finger is there. So the brake shoe has slots in it that fit into the slots on the actuator. The cable, Back here, the emergency brake cable comes through here and you hook it 
onto something that will, as I say, they're, they're, they, they can look different, but it'll be something like this. And as the cable is pulled, notice in the bottom of the actuator, see how that expands it out? That puts pressure on the two shoes and it will force the shoes to go out like that. So, you might have a bit of a time if your actuator is old and crappy and rusted up and seized like this one, releasing it from the actuator. But, it can be done. You gotta take your cable out like this. I'm just gonna show you this one here. If you take your emergency brake cable out, there's a screw in this case. It's got a bit of a funny head on it. I should have left this out, but I'm gonna take it out now just so you can see. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind is if you are having problems releasing the cable from the actuator, see they can have, they're kind of famous for having a slightly different head that's got a hex on it. They use a hex socket. Now if I pull this out, well, what you need to know here is you can pull this out and you can wiggle this all you want. That's not gonna make a whole lot of difference. What you have to do is pull your cable out and this is actually just a sheath over it. It's that. That's where I had to grab the cable itself. So I had a pair of vice grips. Move this back and forth because it was seized on the old actuator. And by holding this out and having my vice grips on this cable, careful not to cut it, I was able to back and forth and, and finally get that cable out and replace the actuator. I want to talk about this hold down clip here and the hold down pin, which you can see the end of the pin coming out. And this is my personally most despised part of this whole job because what happens here is this clip is on the outside of the brake shoe. Here's our brake shoe. And this clip, as I say, is on the outside of the shoe and the pin has to come through from the other end of the pin is actually in behind here on the, on the brake shield. And you have to line it up so that this head of the pin will come through the hold down clip and then you gotta turn it. And you can see that's what's keeping that clip in place. And this, that keeps the shoe in, a, in place here. We talked about the adjuster before, which is right here. That's the one that we turned to change the length of it. Here's the adjuster spring. And I uh, will mention, I always, nowadays where we all have our phones and a camera right easy at hand, before you ever take any of this apart, might be a good idea to take a quick picture if you don't have a manual uh, to go by. Right next to our actuator is our return spring. And you can see here by my end of my screwdriver, there was a hole in the brake shoe at that point, and there was a hole in the lower brake shoe <coughs> where the other end of that spring hooks. So basically you got two springs. Over here, if you've got the, uh, oops, I'm blocking that in my camera, I think. So you got a spring on this side of the shoe, and over on the other one, you have the adjuster spring that we just showed. So you got a lot going on here. And that's what I was talking about. It's it's kind of a miserable job, but it can be done. You stick with it, and if you know all else fails, you always have the option of taking that hub and bearing assembly out. So once you've got your brake shoes replaced and all your springs and everything into place, what the manual recommends you do is you put rotor on. You adjust your, um, by going through that hole that we discussed where you can access the uh, adjuster, turn it until you can't turn your wheel, and then I think it says back it off six notches or something like that. Now, that's great if you have a vehicle hoist, 
what I do is I just take the screwdriver, adjust it, expand it like this, put the rotor back on, see how tight it gets. Because I don't like the idea of putting that screwdriver through. Like I said, it's just a pain in the butt to try to get to it. And once it gets just so I can feel it, I'll take it off, back it off a little bit, and then put the rotor on. Anyways, hope that uh, this was helpful. Mm -hmm.